Good morning, good Maxi morning. I am gonna be interviewing Christine Beckwith and uh, I'm gonna invite her on here in a second. In fact, um, she should be coming on here when I see her in a second. But I wanted to interview Christine Beckwith because uh, she, I, I, was in, I was referred to her book by a good friend of mine. And I actually initially thought that the book titled Clear Boundaries uh, had something to do with just she is looking for, I'm not sure I know what to do, but I will assume. <laughs> okay, Christine, hi Sarah. Christine has never been on a, a live stream where she was, she's was. she been included. Let's see if I can do something here. Hi John. I'm bringing Christine Beckwith on here if you didn't hear me. So Christine, if you are watching this, you have to be watching it in order for me to invite you. It looks like I need to send you an invite. And I did just read your message, Christine. There, okay. Hi, Christine. Okay, hi, Kathy, hi, Michael. Okay, so I might go over here. Here we go, I'm gonna add her. Looks like you're coming on, Christine. You might need to accept the invitation. says it's working. So Christine wrote the book, Clear Boundaries, Every Businesswoman's Essential Safety Guide. She is coming on. Hi, Christine. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Okay, so Christine and I have been chatting, but we've never chatted face-to-face -face like this. This is so yes. great. Isn't it awesome how we can just talk to anybody around the world like this? This is. It's such okay. a powerful tool. I'm sorry my keyboard is showing. I don't know how else to get uh, height. Oh, you're fine. Oh, I'm well, I think I can see I can see you just okay. fine. Okay, Christine, you wrote a really powerful book. I loved reading it. It was referred to me by a good friend of mine. And here's the thing, you know, when I initially heard the title, I thought boundaries for women. I didn't even see the, uh, the, uh, the, your, the other part of the title, clear boundaries. Sure. And then of course the subtitle is every business woman's essential safety guide. I thought, you know, because we talk about boundaries in business and protecting our space and so forth, but not necessarily uh, when it comes to uh, safety from an attacker right. or a man. But, but uh, it just was so ironic because at the very time that this friend referred me to this book and I downloaded it, I actually, um, we, here in this area, in the Des Moines area, we had two gals, um, which is really heartbreaking, two gals that were murdered. Uh, they were, and I shared that with you, they were attacked um, and then murdered and left for dead. They were both, uh, they both happened to be 19 in their teens and college students with very, like, very bright futures. So very heartbreaking. So it, it, it came at the right time. I shared with you, Christine, I, I don't really talk about it a lot, but I've had a couple of different instances in my life where uh, I did certain things that worked. I was actually quite amazed. I had to think fast. And it's really heartbreaking to think that w girls don't really know what to do, see? And so in these situations, these couple of situations, I, I have two teenage daughters and uh, one of the gals uh, apparently said, um, I'm gonna call the police. She pulled out her phone and she said, I'm gonna call the police. Now, we know that she said that because we, they, uh, they caught right. the, the murderer and that's what he basically shared. Um, you know, so, the notion that she could have done and said something better. Right. Now, it, it obviously isn't 100%, right, Christine? But yeah. I think that being aware, being aware of what to do, how to think fast, and it's really not, it is strategy, like I had posted earlier. It's more strategy than strength. Yeah. Because to think that a person can protect themselves or a, a woman can protect themselves from a man, um, it's very unlikely, am I right? We're going to get into that. But let's back up. I'm gonna let you talk and you tell us why you wrote the book. Sure, um, you know, a long story short, I think I've always had this book in me. I think Jessica Peterson, who is the co-author, always had the book in her as well. And like you just described the scenarios, you know, when I started my career at 18, 
I had a coworker go missing as a missing person who would later be discovered murdered a friend um, of mine. And at an impressionable age in my life, my freshman year in college, it was my first job in banking. And so as the years would follow, I took every safety course that my jobs would provide. And I just absorbed that education. And that education would save me as my years would grow on and I would become an executive that was traveling. I found myself in situations where I was driven the wrong way in cabs, where I was um, you know, solicited in aggressive manners in, in public places, in dark places, alone. Um, and so this book, you know, we, I had a near harm situation and so did Jessica last year. So as if our two worlds were perfectly meant to collide, I posted a video on LinkedIn warning women the following morning, very close call where I was followed to my room from a lobby um, bar. I hadn't been at the bar. I, I had come in from um, a business dinner and I had just stopped because I saw people in the lobby that were from my company. This hotel was near my corporate office and we chatted and this, intoxicated man saw me and he followed me. He followed me into an elevator and um, I was very aware. I was sober, I was alert. And um, I asked him what floor he was on. My body was blocking the buttons. And he said, um, the same floor as you. He never looked at the buttons. He looked very intoxicated and I knew right away like in his own way, he had given himself away, you know, in his intoxication. So I had just seconds to think, like I pulled my phone out. I knew I needed to get another person in this scenario. The elevator was going up, the doors open. I stepped out, he stepped out behind me. Anyways, um, I would make like I was making a third party call. He confronted me, he put his hand on my shoulder. Um, he was angry that I had brought like this third person in, which validated the fact that he was up to no good. But I knew I couldn't walk to my hotel room. Did a video the next morning um, and Jessica Peterson reached out to me and she said, I've wanted to do a book for years. So what I'll tell you is this, this book that we wrote has caught fire. Um, it became a bestseller the day it was released. We did a lot of marketing before we released it. It has women and men that have written in it. Um, this is not a book just for women. This is called Clear Boundaries for a Reason. All of the, the safety books that are out there are very tactical safety books. And they leave a lot of the gray area out. And we're, we're now in this place where, you know, danger and harm has come into the areas that political correctness does not promote safety anymore. So our book talks about social media, talks about what women look like to men, how they project themselves, the responsibility they have, and whether they drink or not at social events. It has everything in it. It's state of the art. Um, and then, of course, all of the tactical information of what to do, how to do it, how to defend yourself, all the way up to the lines of um, defense. So I think we've thought of, to this point, everything that every intersection business women come in, and we did it in a really condensed 110 page uh, manual. Okay, so you, there was a lot of research involved, but can I also, um, I know this is, this is a, a sad part of it, but one thing that you didn't mention is what you shared with me and that even though you did have these instances, they actually, they actually brought up uh, some, something that happened to you, to friends of yours. Yeah, so in the middle of, well, not in the middle, at the very end of writing this book, um, Colleen Brownell, who was a chief um, compliance officer in my company, Annie Mac Home Mortgage, um, where I've been for 11 years, um, on December 30th of this past year, um, left, as did all of the Annie Mac employees early to celebrate the New Year's Eve weekend. And long story short, she was murdered with her sister um, around 5.30 p.m. that day. She had, she had a protective order on against her ex um, and it's really, you know, it's not my story to tell beyond the very basic public facts. And that is that she had done everything as a woman should do um, to protect herself. And, um, you know, how ironic that this would occur as we're putting the finishing touches. And we hadn't written the dedication to the book. So, of course, this book is dedicated to Colleen Brownell. And I'm so proud of the work this year. And on behalf of the healing that our company and all of its employees needed to do because there's such an, a terrible, tragic void that is left in the wake of something like this. Um, her two dogs were adopted by an employee. Um, and so her cause was always the Humane Society and she loved her pets. 
Um, and so she, um, we have raised money. A portion of the sales of this book uh, go to directly to that adoptive family to help raise her uh, dogs. And um, I'm really proud. The MBA has picked this book up. Marsha Davies, the chief operating officer. Um, she is uh, an advocate of this book. She's done a video on this book. That has certainly helped. We created a certification, uh, Jessica and I, that's now 40 minutes that can be found on our, our website. And it just, it's a press and play. It's great for business because you can go in, if you want to do an educational seminar, you can play this 40 minute uh, certification. It's going to help them be safe. They get a certificate for attending. Um, but what's wonderful is that um, this coming Saturday, one of the most profound things is happening. And that is 450 women are going to Washington, D.C., to the Real Estate Finance Summit, um, which is the biggest event of the year in my field. And um, every single woman is receiving a copy of that book. Um, so that's really profound. We were highlighted as one of the um, greatest contributors this year towards women's advancement. Um, and so we just feel really lucky to have that platform. And as a result, the MBA donated a large donation in calling Brownell's name um, for the book. So just, it's just, it's catching fire. You know, this past Wednesday, we had, um, you know, thousands of realtors nationally that were receiving the certification. Uh, real estate is one of the number one places of murder and violent crime because of this, of the private meeting um, setting. So, you know, this is a book, uh, Inman just had us on uh, their radio and their news live broadcast this last week. This is a cause, it's not just for women, it's for men. It's, you know, men have wives, they have girlfriends, they have sisters, they have uh, mothers, they have daughters, they have people in their lives that they love and that they want to know are going to be safe. And, and this book right. will keep women safe. And I love how you say this. You say it's a blueprint that leads to a clear line that cannot later be questioned. A line that defines personal space, privacy, and safety for women and makes it unmistakably clear what that line is and what will happen for men who knowingly cross that line. Okay, so do you want to get specific about that? Because there are, like in chapter seven, you actually have a, an executive uh, bodyguard, yep. right? That you interviewed. So there's a lot of research in this. This isn't just... Um, but it's, it's just so ironic that just a few of the uh, powerful tips that were shared in the book um, is, is what I felt like were the exact things that I did. Uh, and I don't know even how, it, how I was able to think that clearly, uh, maybe because, who knows, but it was, just, it was kind of a natural thing for me. And I kind of knew that I wasn't going to be able to fight this yeah. person. So it came out in the words that I said. So can we share some of those tips right yeah, now? Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, okay. I think um, when you speak to clear lines and why the book was called Clear Boundaries is it's funny when we put the images of the book cover up before the book was even released, we had men that, you know, lashed out like, oh, you want to give safety, but you're giving a patent leather high heel red shoe, which is very sexual. And, and our point was to do that. Our point was to say very clearly, um, you know, women should not have to hide their beauty. They should not have to hide that they're women. They, we shouldn't have to walk around in, in you know, uh, gunny sacks and, and with bags over our heads to feel safe. It sounds, right. again, this, there's a lot of political, uh, in, not, there's a lot of outside the boundaries of political correctness in this book. So I, you know, I'm an advocate for it, obviously. So what I tell you is this, we polled men before we did the book. And we said, if, you, if we were to create a safety book that helped create boundaries, what would you want to know? And what we got back from the poll was that men want to know where the line is. They want to know where the clear boundary lies. You know, they don't want, good men do not want to overstep their boundaries. Good men don't want to take the wrong signals. Um, you know, so, so they, they really do not want to step in something accidentally um, that they shouldn't. So the tips um, you know, I'll give you the number one tip because this is the life-saving tip. Um, and I don't feel like it steals any of the thunder from the book because the book's going to give you um, iPhone safety from Apple. It's going to tell you what to do to start the GPS tracking, okay, on your phone in a few clicks without having to make a phone call. So you're stuffed in the backseat of a car. You are in a situation where you cannot open that phone up and dial a number for safety, well, we're gonna tell you how you activate the GPS and at the same time, send a signal out 
that calls 911 on your behalf that is a distress signal that is clearly telling them, I, it's, I've turned the, on the GPS, I am being abducted. It is a silent emergency call for help. Um, and that is in the book. It, Apple had just come out with the recent uh, release. Um, so that is there in the book. But the number one safety tip came from our research of violent crime offenders and murderers. And that was that uh, men that are convicted lifetime felons that were willing to participate in surveys stating why or how their, how their victims could have either avoided them or how previous victims to the victims that fell to their violence um, thwarted against these gentlemen, the, the following intel was provided. Number one, Criminals have to work up the urge and the, um, you know, stamina and the, um, the ability to make that first move. They're working up their guts, I guess, to make that first move. So there's a period of indecision going on if you look into the psychiatry of the, of the perpetrator. And so when they begin to act in the violence, they're still kind of unsure. They're at that tipping point. They're beginning to grab the woman. They're beginning to um, do their act of violence. And so the women that went along to go along, because in, and I've said this a million times, in Hollywood, we, we you know, we glamorize this, this, you know, you're going to go in the car and you're going to go back to this and be held at this guy's house and Brad Pitt's going to swoop in at the end of the movie and save you. And the truth is, every minute that you go along to get along, you are giving power to the perpetrator. You are getting, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned there. Uh, what is mentioned, I recall, uh, in chapter seven is you have milliseconds. You do. And in my uh, two, I have, I've had actually three instances in my life where this happened. But uh, two uh, happened in Florida, and I don't know why um, <laughs> why I'm mentioning that. But uh, Des Moines has a different um, feel to it. However, we just had two girls murdered. See, so it's like we are women are prey, and I hate to say that, but we kind of are. So. There are, you have milliseconds and I chose to take action and, and uh, become extremely like verbal. Yeah. Okay. And I mentioned to, do you mind if I share two things? No, because it yeah. did kind of match up with what Please. the suggestions were. Two of the things I said was I led both of them to believe I had a gun and that I was going to shoot. I used expletives and I did that to show that I um, was going, they might not want to mess with me. Okay. So there wouldn't be any begging. I'm not saying begging doesn't work. I just don't think that it does. But I will say that I really do think that my quick response and po possibly even um, what looked crazy, like a crazy response, worked. Yeah. And so what you just said about, you know, they, they're working up the nerve. Okay. And so if you can, within seconds, let them know that you aren't necessarily going to be one that goes down quietly. Yeah. Right. So I used the term gun and I used a male's voice or male's name as if there was someone the around. The same. Yes. Yes. And I noticed both their reaction was different when they thought there was a gun or another man yeah. around. Yeah, because you're presenting a line of defense and you're also presenting a, a third party into it. And what's interesting, and, and so that's awesome that you have that natural reaction. And, and many women do. Many women's natural, they call it flight or fight. Um, reaction is to fight. And um, so it's important for us to be prepared mentally and have that plan. So it, it truly is to to fight and be loud. You are in a public place typically, even if you're in a par parking lot, even if you're jogging on a back road, you're still not in behind closed doors. You're out there somewhere. And so, you know, you have to fight. You have to fight for your life and you have to fight in a way where you mean it. You, you, you need to injure probably the perpetrator. Um, you need to get away from them, put distance between you and them. Um, you I, don't think that, I don't think that it's said enough that uh, eyeballs, don't think that you can actually fist fight a guy. We give you the okay? tips. Go for so thumbs to the eye. That's right. We give you tips in this book of exactly what to do if, in the, and from self-defense. So, I mean, this book in 110 pages, we have all of the safety tips from the National Association of Realtors. We have a self-defense guy that gave us all his top 10 tips. We have the top 10 things that convicted felons say would, would stop them, would have stopped them, which is a third party being there, the, the phone call trick, the fighting, you know, the levels of, 
um, you know, self-defense. And so we give you the lines of defense. We, we urge you to have a home plan, you know, with your family for a break-in. We urge you to have an office plan with your peers at work. You know, these are things that, you know, none of us go to work every day or go in and out of our lives, but there's clear ways we can create boundaries. You know, I've created more boundaries than I ever have. Um, I have to say that, you know, I've been more vocal with a, a, a person that steps into my space than I've ever been. And what I mean by that is, you know, when I would have just been nice to a guy that was maybe flirting and I just chalk it up to, you know, just, you know, one of the things you have to deal with in business, um, I'm more likely to say, like, honestly, that don't say that, or that makes me feel uncomfortable, or, or I'm going to act like you didn't say that, and I'm going to bring it back to a place of business. But a very clear statement that will make the other person know, like, that boundary is being crossed right now. So, and I don't know that I always did, because some of the subtleties that are really good for our, our teenage girls, our daughters, our, our nieces, you know, the young girls that are out there, is that they wind up down roads they don't know they're even winding up down. And so there is a chapter in the book about, and some personal stories shared about women that kind of said, yes, yes, okay, or went along in, in dating situations um, that ended up down clear paths they could not get back from. And even though they left and um, it really, you know, they may not have acted, they may not have even reported the situation. They were left scarred and they were left, um, you know, carrying some, some uh, PSTD bag, PTSD baggage with them because of what had happened. And, and I think that, um, you know, we as women just have to really think about, you know, and, and we have to help our younger women think about those every step that takes us down those paths. Okay, so one of the uh, clear boundaries, I just had a situation the other day where I invited someone to my house, I was selling something and he was, you know, and I didn't know him and I was, I was fine. But one thing that he kept doing, um, and most men don't do this, but I noticed he was, is he was overstepping his boundary and getting too close. Now, I don't know why he was doing it. I'm sure he didn't mean to, but maybe he was testing me. And I wondered about that. So a lot of times when you feel like we all have this personal space, right? And he should have known, in my opinion, he should have yeah. known that I don't know the woman, I'm in her garage, like maybe not get so close. He did it a few times and I stepped back. So I was sending him a clear message. Yeah. Like, you know, there's no, it's not necessary for us to you to be getting that close yeah. to me. So, um, so they, he talks about this too in the book, right? So that's, that's just one way. Everything from, you know, like step like, back. We even give women you know, advice when they're at social events, like networking events. Um, listen, our, our desire is for a woman to read this book end to end and take the pieces that apply. You know, there are, I'm a tough girl, you know, I'm not prudish. Um, you know, I, I'm not, a, I say that because I probably am a surprising advocate or I at least surprised some people with this advocacy. And I thought that in and of itself was kind of funny because I thought, I wonder, what image they had of me that they thought it would be surprising that I would write a safety book, but it lends to this discussion for us to realize that there's a lot of gray area between, you know, uh, where your safety boundaries are and we're all different, you know? So I think there's an elevated level in society of women realizing it's time to speak up. It's time to educate. It's time to be aware. It's time to take responsibility um, for our own situations and it's time to be clear and that's really what you know the the book was written for and of course because of my two co-workers uh nikki evangelist nikki evangelist who was murdered um and you know i have people that will see this when it plays on facebook i have lots of friends that are friends with nikki and you know nikki evangelist lost her life to an ex um, and, and, and that gentleman is, uh, he doesn't even deserve to be called a gentleman. That guy is up for parole. It's been 25 plus years and that family has to go every single year and they have to retell her story and they have to try to keep him, you know, and it's been that way for five or six years now. So, um, listen, these are real things that, you know, this, I, I think sometimes, we fall short of understanding the idea that it won't happen to me or it, it happens to other people. No, it happens. And, and it's, you know, it could happen to you. So 
really hope our books. Yeah, and help. I think I think being aware and not paranoid. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So there's nothing worse than feeling paranoid, and I do believe in the law of attraction. Okay, to the point where you can actually uh, create your environment. However, um, we also know that nobody deserves to be treated that way, and it doesn't necessarily mean that this person attracted it. Okay with what she was wearing or whatever. There is, there are some, there's, a, there are a few places where I'm glad that you shared it too, is, is that we, we women have a responsibility not just to set boundaries, but um, what do you mean by, and I wish I could quote it verbatim, uh, what do you mean by uh, we, we have a, uh, we have to take a certain responsibility with how we protect ourselves online yeah. and so forth. Can you expand on that with that? I don't want to offend anybody yeah. or upset, but. We went into some studies on the neuroscience, written by neuroscientists, of what happens when men view imagery. Um, and this sounds, I always compare this to like the fifth grade sex ed class when everybody's giggling because it's kind of awkward to talk about these particular subjects. But the truth is, the men that are viewing pornography in the world are viewing uh, social media on the same devices. And so there's, if you understand that what's bringing them to those places is the same vehicle, there's similarities, there's a similar feeling. And so what's happening is maybe they're switching within seconds from one thing to another. And then there's this new world we live in where there's no big definition when we enter Facebook that says, this is a social media site, this is not a dating site. You are not to hit on women on this site. You know, it doesn't do that. Facebook would never do that because they'd lose uh, millions of followers because, of course, it's used that way. Um, and so each social media that's used is used in different ways. And, of course, there's business social media as well. And, you know, professional social media is, is an even more interesting uh, dynamic because you would think those boundaries would be pretty clear and pretty loud and pretty obvious, but they still are where I, I receive my most violent um, words put at me on LinkedIn. Um, and so maybe because I advocate more there for the, the book and the professional selling, it brings the angry men that don't like what I represent out. Um, and that just comes with the territory. But what I want you to know is that we created a Facebook uh, women need to understand that if they cast a net to answer you, um, if they have that one guy that they've got a crush on that they're trying to look pretty for and that they want, you know, to look pretty for, that when they put their profile picture up, they're probably also going to get whatever else is out there um, back with that net. So what I say is use our frame. It says keep it professional. It's, it's um, if you go to Facebook profiles and you go to the frame area, you, the search word for it is Keep It Professional by Jessica Peterson, my co-author. She's brilliant coming up with this. Um, because once you put it on your Facebook frame, you can screenshot your Facebook frame, your picture with the frame on it. And you can use that for all other social medias because we couldn't get the frame onto every single social media because some of them just don't exist. But if you do that, you can then use it on most other social medias as your profile and the frame goes with it and then it's up. The moment I did that, I started to see a decline in the number, and I get daily this. I get daily this, you know. Um, it's anywhere between five and 20 sexual advances via email or text a day is my average. I have 80,000 followers, um, and those comments will range between, um, hey, you're beautiful, and it starts like that, to all the way what they want to do to me or what they would do to me if they could have me alone type of commentary. And so uh -huh. it's, um, it's very scary. It creates a world where if I'm publicly saying where I'm going to be to speak, you are now very alert. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's hard. It's hard. This, this book was really written for business women. It's for every woman, but it's really for business women to understand like the, there is a, there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a big spotlight now. Yeah. And, you know, it's always, it's always surprised me that women will actually check in in a restaurant and so forth when they're there. Um, I, if I ever check in at a restaurant, I'm gone. Yeah. Or, or I did it after. You know, it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it just surprises me because that's one way that you're, you know, if you've got someone watching online and they want to go meet you in the parking lot because you just told them where you were, 
then you set it up. It's not your fault. That's not what I'm saying. But how can we avoid this? Check in after you leave. And that's in gone. the book. No, and we also talk about geotagging on, on photos. I don't want to teach people watching this how the wrong way, because I could give away information people don't even realize. But there's some safety tips in there about geotagging that occurs. when, uh, in, in short, when you leave your GPS open or on, because you need it to be on or open if you use Waze or other apps as your, as your GPS, you are actually, every photo you take is geotagged. And so there are ways for perpetrators to look at the geotag on a photo. So if you do a social media post and you take a picture right now of something funny or something you're doing and you put it up on a social media, um, if that perpetrator wants, they can look at the geotag on that photo and they're going to know precisely where you are. So um, again, you know, I, you have to think, you have to be alert. That's why this book was created, was to keep you from falling in these traps. I think there's a lot, I think there, you can really keep yourself safe. I truly, truly believe, um, you know, that for, by a large percentage, that women can keep themselves safe if they read this. And I will say this, I took a safety class 25 years ago and I never forgot the things that I, I learned. And many of those things kept me safe right up until I wrote the book. And then I added everything, you know, with Jessica to this book. So we know this book is, is gonna be big um, and it, it's getting big, it's getting traction. Um, we hope it goes viral and, and for the right reasons. You know, we wanna pay safety forward. We want to bring um, Colleen Brownell's memorial forward. Um, and we just want to really, you know, Jessica and I want to leave, a le this is our legacy work um, for her and I, you know, how do we leave our mark? And, and this is one of the ways we're doing it. One thing that uh, to, I'm, I'm going back to giving tactical, yeah. like, actual strategy and tips. One of the things that um, I noticed was um, that I hadn't even thought of and so it taught me something was that you could, um, you can disable, try to disable someone um, by kicking them in the side of the knee. And by the way, ladies, kicking is a lot better than hitting. Okay, if you can kick, do it. It's going to make a huge difference. So, the, so you know, setting the boundary, um, either stating it. If you're, if you're quite, obviously in the situations that I shared where I started yelling. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, it was. It was this person was hiding behind a tree. It was very obvious. I turned around, thought I saw someone, turned around again. I'm so glad I turned around again because that's when he was running. And I knew I, I've got, okay, it's almost going to be over here for me if I don't do something. And that's the first thing that came to me. So uh, gun, man, okay, mention a man's name. And so if you can convince them that there's someone around, that was number one. But I would have never thought, like, if it's too late and they're on you, okay, and they've got the better of you, just like uh, in chapter seven, you'd mentioned, you know, try to be eye level. Obviously, yeah. we're most, most women are shorter, yeah. okay? But if you're steps, whatever, it's not always the best situation, okay, if you're with a stranger to have them over you. But one of the things in terms of self-defense that I hadn't thought of um, is, is kicking the side of the knee. Yes. Yep. Okay, and how damaging that can be, or the back of the knee. Yeah, because it disables, you can actually do enough damage to take them down in, in that way. So, I mean, the, the self-defense tips we're giving are, are going to be, you know, take out blows. They're going to be take out tactics. Um, you know, you are, you know, looking to disable. The you're, you're buying yeah, time. Yeah, you're buying you're time, distance, <laughs> especially in a very private setting like a back road. Uh, I got followed last year jogging. And it was on a road and I pushed the limits. I, it was into the fall. It was about a year ago now and it was into the fall and, and it was getting darker earlier. And I thought I had enough time to get home and I was about a mile and a half from my house, but I was on a dirt road, no lights, um, you know, and I'm jogging along thinking like how silly, you know, it was getting darker faster. Now I had my iPhone, which I can use as a, as a cause I always make sure I have a, a light, um, you, you know, a flashlight or something when you're running. And um, this car just rolled behind me and stayed behind me. And it stayed behind me long enough where I got uncomfortable. And I kept telling myself, I, women tend to naysay them, that you're paranoid. We tend to have a voice in our head where we're like, no, 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 don't freak, you know, don't freak because yep. this is not a dangerous situation. And especially right now where, you know, I've had friends joke like, you know, God forbid someone roll up on you right now, right after you wrote this book. And, and I say, well, yeah, I'm a lot more aware now after writing this book of things I could do. But 
you know, they say confront, you know, confront in that situation, which is kind of what you did in yours. And that's what I did. I finally, after I literally, I felt like a half a mile, might've been a quarter of a mile of this person, this car, which was tinted windows, driving slow behind me, not going by me. I turned around, I stopped. I still had a little daylight left and I ran towards the vehicle and I pounded on the passenger's window. And the gentleman, again, gentleman, guy rolled the window down um, and he was laid back. He looked stoned out of his mind. Um, he had a cap on and he was smiling like a fisher cat type of, you know, the cat that ate the canary smile like he knew he had perturbed me. And I said, you know, you can go by me. I said, I just, I'm letting you know you can go by me. And um, he really didn't say much. He was, he was, he looked like he was probably pretty messed up. And so he did, he, there wasn't much words exchanged. He just kept looking at me. And I don't know if he was thinking in his moment, like, do I go open the door, grab her? What do I do? I was already thinking like, you know, my heart was racing. Um, but it was enough to startle him that I was that aggressive. And he, he mm -hmm. rolled forward. And I stood there like I was making a phone call at this point. Like I wanted to make him think like I was making. And he rolled out of sight because I still had a mile down that road to go behind him in that car. No lights, no anything. And I thought, God, just let me get out of these woods. You know, like, and I will, I promise you I'll never run again, you know, during dusk. And um, he went out in distance and I found my knees were weak underneath me for a moment. But I found myself and then I just, and I went and I ran like the wind um, and I got home and I cried once I got home. So, you know, it's, if you add up how many times one individual woman has situations like this happen, each of us, every woman everywhere, um, it yep. would frighten the men around us to know, I think. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, there's good men that don't deserve to have stereotypes painted on them and for those men we love you we want you to know we love you we appreciate you we appreciate everything you stand for all of the law enforcement men all the men in our lives that are there to protect us and of course would protect us at all costs um you know this book was written to help everybody in society and especially the women you know create the boundaries that will keep them from going down dirt road right and i think yeah, and, and there's a lot of innocent men that don't realize that they're possibly overstepping right. boundaries. So it could help them as well. That's right. I mean, because you, how embarrassing would that be that they were overstepping a boundary and not realizing it and, you know, have a woman uh, who knows what yell and scream. That would be humiliating yeah, exactly. for them. So I would think that, um, I mean, it's for both. And I have a son. I have two daughters and a son. And, you know, I would hate for him to not understand these yeah. things. And it is, yeah, I think it's a confusing time right now. It really it is. is. So that's why um, I, I had posted um, earlier that this is not, and I took those words, by the way, from, from the book. Yeah. Um, this book is not meant to uh, scare men or incite riot. I mean, I'm, I'm so tired of the divisiveness. Yeah. I really am. Okay, we've got to start coming together. And it's all about communication, right? And commu communication comes from, uh, not just our mouths, but yeah, I mean, how I mean, we carry ourselves. I know that in the last week, there's obviously, you know, the Me Too movement got pulled into the White House, and and you know, you have political divisiveness of, as well. You know, I think that as human beings, all of us, we just need to err on the side of respect for these boundaries. I think that what you know, I don't want to put any labels on what just happened at the White House. I'm not even going to comment on it. I, I, I don't even want the public to know my opinion. Um, what I will tell you is I'm on the side of women's safety and I'm on the side of women not getting hurt. And um, the rest, uh, you know, it's up to each of us to, to arm ourselves with the things we need to do. And, and this is meant to be an offensive move forward. We say it in the book in the first chapter, like we can't change what's happened in the past. You know, we can't rewrite history. But we can write the future chapters of our lives and we can put something out there that give us power and give us um, support and defense. And that's what this is doing. So for what that's worth, we feel like we're depositing some money into the bank here of our future safety. Um, and so we don't want to spend a lot of time. and We don't spend a lot of time in the book. The book opens up with the title from the New York Times. 
of Barbara Carter's murder, who is was a prominent realtor um, that was murdered in the first famous case of a realtor being murdered. And we wanted that impact. We wanted the readers to begin in a very understanding, you know, there's no way to soften the statements of the things that, that are within the pages of this book. And, you know, it really needs to grab the reader. It needs to be able to say to the reader, you know, this book was written because of the most horrific things that have occurred. So um, that's what we try to do. We think we've done a great job. We have so many women like yourself, thank you, that are jumping on the bandwagon wagon in their areas to spread the word, um, that are grabbing this manual, to see its value, see what it is, um, and they're paying it forward to the women in their community. And I think you're doing an amazing thing, especially where there's been some violence um, you know, in your area and, um, you know, good for you, you know, get, pay this forward. It's, we could be saving lives. It was meant to be, it was meant, it was meant to be for this, this book to get in my, my view, um, because it was just that very weird. Yeah. It, that happened. Yeah. Crazy. yeah. Um, you know, there was also a realtor, um, it just, it was, again, some irony to it. Um, when I lived in Florida, I, uh, on the, the the very day that the realtor, and I can't remember if it was Texas, I can't remember where she lived, but there was a, a mother of three, I think she had three kids, and she was a realtor and she was murdered. And uh, she was taken from the home, so she was asked to meet in this home. And um, and I was just that very day was on the way to meet with Barbara Corcoran and to listen to her speak at a private dinner. And um, it's just, so I'll, I remember that. It's like, because she was on, my mind at that dinner and Barbara's talking about real estate, but we don't talk enough about this. And I'm, I was in real estate. I, I sold for a short time, both commercial and residential. And I'm here to tell you one of the reasons why I uh, decided to do something different and run my business from home was, was to, first of all, spend more time, have more time with my kids. But um, I had a situation where went was, was called out, uh, so a guy had called me and wanted to meet at this property, was not my property, didn't have my name on it, but went out there and it was just out in the sticks, okay? And it wasn't, wasn't the heater wasn't on, nothing. I was able to get in, but as I'm, as I'm going into this home without water, freezing cold, I, and, and no other houses around, I'm thinking, why? Like, you know, it's, it's our instinct to go. So, um, and as I'm walking in the door, one thing that you can do is let, him walk in ahead of you, right? Okay, that would be smart, which I started to do. But then he said, as he entered, he says, I saw your picture and I wanted to meet you. And I said, and I was like, you know, I said, it is freezing in there. I'm gonna go out in my car, let, let me know what you think. And uh, so <laughs> he, I don't know what he was thinking by saying that. He just well, probably wasn't thinking. It was probably harmless. You're but making still, a really, time. really valid point and a good example though. We tend to, I was saying a minute ago, like the naysayer in our head that says this isn't a dangerous situation. That's a thing. Um, and, and another thing is like, we, we fear giving bad service. Like we're, we're, trained as yes. we're trained as professional women to provide good service and good service means giving the customer, the client an experience that from end to end, door to door, we've delivered them and We've done. We don't want to hurt anyone's right. feelings. We're always saying, I'm sorry. Women need to stop saying that. Uh, we don't want to make us look like we're paranoid or we don't, we, we avoid awkwardness and uncomfortable. Yeah, like that was and it doesn't super have awkward to say, hey, help yourself because your, your service self would have gone in and shown every nook and cranny in the house and, and, and sold, 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 you know, in your profession and provided great service. Something in your gut told you not to. He set the stage for that. And um, I just had a girl, I, and I don't want to name who it is, but I just had a girl on social media have a, a creep come out of the woodwork and, you know, kind of solicit her in a sexual way. And she decided to screenshot it and put it up. And I, I commend her for her braveness in doing that. I will tell you that in doing it, she had several friends of hers speak up and say, why'd you have to do that? Like, that was that was kind of like, in defense of the guy, you know, they didn't know the guy come to find it. Cause I asked that question. She was someone that actually saw me speak um, and has a copy of my book, clear boundaries. And my book ended up coming out in the comment sections of this dialogue. So it was interesting, this picture of the book, you know, and, and, and so I commented and I said, bravo, you know, for you 
in doing this because we need to do awkward, uncomfortable things. And we need to do more of that um, because when we do awkward and uncomfortable things, um, we're sending a very strong message to the public that women are not going to allow certain things. And for all of the other people that that affects, um, good is what I say. You know, I think a few brave women need to do a few awkward things and they need to make a, a big deal about it because that's, there's been, you know, this, this feeling of if that person feels, you know, like they can do that. If they, I couldn't imagine doing that myself. That's what, that's how wired differently I am. But, you know, I, I just, we, it needs to stop, you know, that has to stop and, and women need to do awkward things. If you need to stop a sale in the middle of it as a realtor, if you need to, if you get an eerie feeling in the car, you need to drive back to a safe place and get out of that car. And, you know, I just, we say it and NAR says it, you know, in the, in the book that we have, you know, don't, don't let your worry of service, you know, at some point you have to shut the business mind off and put your human mind on. Cause again, talking about ending up down roads that you can't get back from. Sometimes we push ourselves as business people down a certain road, like this is okay. You know, yes, he flirted with me, but I'm okay. Like, I'm just going to show this house. I need to show this house. I need this sale or whatever's going on in our minds, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, because that moment that, that the realtor that I was referring to that I think it was in Texas and um, uh, she was taken from the house um, and murdered. Uh, but the, the, the guy, yeah. the murderer, uh, he said to her, you're, um, you know, I think they were in the upstairs master bedroom. And he said, you're about to have a very bad day. I think he said, how's your day going? And she said, fine. He said, it's about to get very bad. Well, you know, I'm just going to say it. If I was a realtor, I'd have a, I'd carry a gun and it would be ready. And I would go shooting um, at the range and I would be very ready because <laughs> he deserved to have a gun in his yeah. face. In my yeah. Opinion. We yeah. talk about the lines of defense. And of course, again, when you get into weapons, you get into muddy and very passionate um, wa waters. Um, so yes. we try... We or pe there's pepper spray if you're against guns. Yes. There is such thing as pepper spray, and just dart spray. No, is what and what I, I say, I say in the book, I say in the very first chapter, and I wrote these words in this book. I said there it is absolutely impossible within the pages of this book for us to not step into a place where we're politically incorrect by today's societal standards, where we don't offend somebody reading what we're about to write, where we don't tip the scales on gun advocacy or political advocacy or the gender debate, or the Me Too movement, it is impossible to write a safety book for women without any of those boundaries being crossed, i.e. the irony in our book called Clear Boundaries. In order to create clear boundaries, we need to cross some big boundaries that have been built by mm -hmm. decades of people saying, this is how you stay in this certain place. And lives have been lost trying to stay in this certain place. So listen yeah they don't want to be a, they don't want to be a trouble right so what i say is if you choose to arm yourself and we do say weapons is the third line of personal defense then we tell you to take the courses get great at it get certified get your license that you know buy them legally um you know of course follow all of the the standards and regulations about housing your arms in a safe way um so you know we don't take that on ourselves in this book we just say Yes, it's a line of defense. And yes, it's a smart one. If you need it and want it or feel safe using it, it's totally personal. It's your choice. And as making that choice, we only advise that you get certified, do it legally, do, you know, and we say all the right things. So I now have mace. I just had a woman um, give me mace that works for me uh, during a recent branch visit. And I have wanted to buy some, uh, you know, writing this book. And I don't know why I hadn't to this point. Um, and I now have it. Um, I have my firearm license and I, you know, have a firearm. Um, but now I have a mace to jog with. It's a jogging mace and it, and it, and it you know, goes on the arm and whatever. So anyways, um, awesome. yeah, new levels of security, personal security. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anything else you'd like to say so we could wrap this up? Yeah. I don't even know how long, cause I can't see the That's time. Okay. I don't know how long we've been talking.
But then also if women have stories, if you're yes. listening to this and you have stories, uh, there's a somewhere you yes. can go. Please send them to your web, that website, so website that you were telling me about. Yeah, we created a community. I'm really, really proud of this. Candy Zolkowski, who is the editor of um, Clear Boundaries, did an amazing job creating a website. It's it's www.businesswomansafety.com, all together, all lowercase, woman, singular, businesswomansafety.com. And on there is a place that you can subscribe. And if you have a near harm story, um, or you have a story where you applied a tip from our book, we want to hear about it. And so we've created community. We've already had three women step forward and say that they feel that their lives have been saved. And, um, you know, we, we hoped for one. So we think that's amazing that that's happening. Um, you can also find a link to our certification course if you want to um, have that. And um, you can also get the book there all, all in one uh, on that website. You know, the only thing I would just tell you is that, um, you know, this is, this is a cause that's not going to go away. Um, you know, we're going to continue to see violent crime, unfortunately. Um, in, and maybe we're more alert, you know, to it, and it's top of mind more than ever. Um, but I think there's going to be a lot of lives saved. And, and someone asked me the other, other day, well, what do, you, what do you mean by lives saved? Do you really think you're going to save lives? I got, I got asked this on a live interview, and it was an interesting question. And, and, and Jessica was on this particular podcast with me, and she said this, and I thought it was so great. You know, there are scars that women get from violence and from boundaries being crossed. And those scars live with those women for the rest of their lives. And their lives are changed by those things. And so when we say save lives, we hope that yes, in a physical attack, we will save lives. But if we save the life quality of a woman, if we save the lives and the way they live for women because we prevent crimes of violence that leave scars forever, then we are still saving lives. So we hope to save, you know, literal lives and um, the, the quality of the life of women. I love that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, say the, the domain name one more yep. time. Uh, www.businesswomansafety.com. Businesswomansafety.com. And then they can also tell their stories they there, can. yes? Yes, yep. Okay. I think hearing stories and, and if a person, uh, a woman has shares a story, I think it just helps people um, understand uh, better uh, to, first of all, to listen to their intuition. Yeah. Okay. But also all of these suggestions and advice, it really does add yeah. up. And it could have very well been, you know, the Oprah that I watched for years and she'd bring someone on, you know, it, I, I say that it was natural for me to do that, to, to make that choice, because I felt like I had a millisecond. Sure. Um, but it also could have been, I could have picked something up in hearing, okay, from yeah. others. Um, and just don't That's remember right. it and recall. Right. Oh, okay, thank you so much, thank Christine. Thank you for Go, having uh, me. You're doing a great job out there. We appreciate that so much. Thank you. Clear Boundaries is the name of the book. Christine Beckwith, Every Businesswoman's Essential Safety Guide. Go and buy it. And if you are a CEO, which by the way, I have a list of 40,000 CEOs. I haven't told you about that. We need to get this book in front of them somehow. Okay. But if you are a CEO, you have employees, this is a perfect gift for them for Christmas or just to do it. Okay. Um, and also I would think would be helpful in cutting down on sexual harassment. <laughs> right? With the, with, with setting clear boundaries or at least explaining them, getting that's so helpful. Okay. Thank you, Christine. Have a great day. Bye-bye.